Before we start the video, quick public service announcement. Only about 10% of you guys are subbed to the channel. If you enjoyed the content, if you gave it a like, please make sure you subscribe. It goes a long way to help the channel. Thank you so very much. Let's begin. So like the video says, seven of the biggest flexes in black history. There's low key a lot of flexes. So that may come a part two. Uh, but let's get through this one first. So number one, Mansa Musa. If you don't know who Mansa Musa is, just think of him as the richest person to ever exist on the planet Earth because that's exactly what he was. He was the king of the Mali Empire. And like I said, he goes down in history as being the richest person ever. Here's his flex. He is so rich. He went to Egypt and he crashed Egypt's economy by giving out too many generous gifts of gold and other uh, treasures. And because of that, their economy crashed. The value of gold went because of all the gold he was just handing out. So, I mean, Mansa Musa, biggest flex. Like you cannot flex harder than that. Just you crashed an entire country's economy because of your gifts. Imagine if Egypt has sent him a bill. All right, next flex, let's go. So my boy, Paul Cuffey. Paul Cuffey is probably one of my favorite people in black history, like literally out of everyone. He's just, his story's phenomenal. But you know, and I, maybe I'll put a card up here somewhere uh, so you can listen to his story. But his flex is mad crazy. See, he was a ship guy. He had a bunch of ships. Uh, he was a maritimer, uh, mercantile empire basically. And he had a bunch of ships. Uh, one, I should mention, um, all of his ships only employed black employees and were also only built by black employees. So just slight flex, but not the real flex. Real flex is coming up. See, in the War of 1812, the president at the time, I can't remember who it was, but the president at the time took one of Paul Cuffey's ships and mistaked it for an enemy ship. Uh, and he impounded the ship and Paul Cuffey didn't know about it because he was on a trip when he got back from his trip and his worker was like, hey, uh, president done took your ship, my fault. Paul Cuffey said, who? The president? Psh, let me go knock on that man door. Paul Cuffey is the first, I kid you not, the first black man to go knock on the front doors of the White House and walk in to the White House through the front doors. Pray before him, no black men, doesn't matter if they were I mean, we built the building, but it didn't matter. And it didn't matter if they were helping or like a servant there. Literally, no black person had ever walked through the front doors of the White House until Paul Cuffey. And he goes in and he's like, listen, Mr. President, I don't care what you want. I'm going to need my shit back. Keep in mind, this is a black man in the early 1800s. The early 1800s. He should have been dead four times by now. But. He walked in, said, I need my shit back. And guess what? In six days, he had his shit back. That is a flex. For the early 1800s as a black man, that's a flex. I don't care what nobody say, that's a flex. Number three, if you don't know who the Moors are, uh, I got to learn something in another video. But the Moors, they were basically uh, black Muslims uh, and they had their own kind of empire but not that not that's not what i'm talking about yet right so what ended up happening was in spain there was a tyrannical king he was screwing over his people he was really hurting his people and so envoys came to the moors and said hey moors y'all are solid people could y'all maybe you know free us from this king so the moors did, did just that they got together an army and they went and fought against the king's men and they decimated them and then took over. And they took over Spain. I mean, they gave all kinds of good stuff to the Spaniards. I mean, they gave them free school, free health care, um, standard education. Uh, before the Moors, most people in Europe, not just Spain, but most people in Europe couldn't even read and write. But when the Moors came in, everyone got the ability to. Previously, that was only meant for kings and queens. 
and and the moisture were so good but that's not really the flex i mean that is a flex but not the flex here's where the flex comes in the moors did this and took over spain and and freed all the people and they did it without enslaving a single person I mean, by Europe standards, that's a flex. SS Edward Carter, SS stands for Staff Sergeant. He was a, uh, a member in the armed forces, I believe the army during World War II, okay? He is probably one of my favorite black history military men across like global militaries, not just the US military, but global militaries. First of all, the man has literally been fighting wars since the age of 15. Like at 15, he snuck away to go uh, to China and fight against the Japanese. And then I, I think something like that. And then he went to Spain and fought against uh, fascists in Spain. And then he came to the US and was like, hey, I'll fight for y'all too. But that's not the flex. Flex is they sent him on a mission, him and three other dudes. And those three other guys, they got kind of, uh, we'll say, put out of commission early on in the mission. So Carter had to finish the mission by himself. Keep in mind, Manz is going against eight different German soldiers by himself, right? And when I say eight different German soldiers, I mean these soldiers quite literally have freaking miniguns that they're shooting at him. Right? And he almost single-handedly takes out each and every one of them. Keep in mind, he's going against eight other people with freaking miniguns, Gatling guns, whatever the thing is called. And all he has is a little Thompson. And he beats them all. He throws a grenade. Boom. Takes out two. Pop, pop. Takes another two. Pop, pop. Takes another two. Right. And there's two left. Two men left. And here's what he does. Here's why I say he's, this is a flex. He captures those two men, right? And keep in mind, by this time, he's all shot up, got shot in the leg, shot in the arm. He can't even move one of his arms because his arm got all shot up, right? And he's got these two men, gun to their back. Keep walking, keep walking. And here's where the flex comes in. Here's where the flex comes in. He interrogates both these German soldiers, right? And at first they're like, ooh, we don't speak English. And I don't, I don't really know how German accents sound, so please forgive me for that horrible accent. But we don't speak English. So you know what he does? He speaks German. He was like, oh, you don't speak English? Okay, well, mein Name ist Karta. And just hit him with the boop boop. Let me know what you know, because I'm going to tell my dudes on the other side. That's the flex in my book. First of all, taking out eight dudes by yourself is a flex. And then when you interrogate them in German, I, they did not expect you to know German. They didn't expect that. So that's a flex in my book. Jesse Owens. If you don't know who Jesse Owens is, I feel like I start everybody off like that. That's not bad. I'm going to stop doing that. But Jesse Owens. See, Jesse Owens is a, an Olympian, right? He's a track, I believe he's a track runner. And... In 1939, if I'm not mistaken, I'm maybe mistaken about the year, but I'm pretty sure it's 1939. Jesse Owens went to, you know, Germany to on, on to represent the U.S. And I don't know if you know who was the chancellor of Germany at the time, but it's this little known guy named Hitler. And see, Hitler was out to prove that the Aryan race is the best race. No one can beat the Aryans, except except maybe maybe Jesse Owens, right? So here's where the flex comes in. They do their race, and Jesse Owens comes first, right? Not there yet. Jesse Owens comes first. That is a flex, because, I mean, he's a first gold medal Olympian. But the real flex is when it comes to the podium, because Jesse Owens stared Hitler down when they sang the national anthem. And, I mean, like, that's just the flex. My boy said, you said Arians was better. Psych! <laughs> that's a flex tommy smith and john carlos you may recognize them from this picture see they are literally amazing for what they did and, and the effect on their lives afterwards was very very negative but they did what they had to do here's why i say it's a flex prior to them actually going 
to the Olympics, they had already had their plan that when they get on the podium, they were gonna throw the fist up. Now wait, let me repeat that. They had already planned when they got on the podium, they were gonna throw the fist up. What does that tell you? That tells you that before they even went to the Olympics, they already knew they would go on the podium. They already knew. They were like, yeah, we're gonna make it. We're like, we ain't even worried about it. Like, I kid you not, they almost didn't go to the Olympics because they were gonna protest it instead, but they were like, eh, this is the best way to do it. So they went, they went and they won. Not, not that they couldn't win, but they knew they would. They knew it. And when they did, they did what they had to do. That is a flex. Last flex, and you may say that I'm trying to, you know, cop out and, and, and fall down to it, but, but, but hear me out here. The last flex I have for y'all is being black. Honestly, anywhere in the world, uh, in America, yes, but anywhere in the world, being black is a flex. Let me tell y'all. Like, literally, I can't think of a people that are as oppressed throughout the entirety of history, um, but still comes back and and just glows and shines and, and perseveres and, and exhibits so much strength. Not to mention, we are literally like the epitome of everything. I mean, sports, come on now, we, we got that on lock. Music, that's our stuff. Entertainment, that's our stuff. Like, literally, we are just phenomenal. And honestly, I, being black is a flex, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyways, thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please drop a like, drop a comment. Uh, I'll sh if you drop a comment, I will shout you out in the next video. So anyone who drops a comment, I'm shouting you out next video. I'll also respond to your comment, of course. But also keep in mind, only 10% of you guys are subbed. So if you enjoyed the video, if you watched, you got all this way far, then please subscribe. It really goes a long way to help out the channel. Thank you. Uh, we out.